In the heart of ancient Mexico, the Aztec society thrived with its distinct hierarchy and roles, weaving a rich tapestry of life. At the apex of this societal pyramid, the nobility reigned supreme, holding sway over critical domains like the military, state administration, judiciary, and priesthood. Their influence was pervasive, shaping the very essence of Aztec life. Yet, even in this lofty realm, distinctions existed, with the most exalted holding key positions while others supported their endeavors. For those yearning to rise above their social station, avenues were indeed present, particularly in the military and religious spheres. While nepotism often greased the wheels of advancement, merit-based promotions were equally plausible, as were demotions for incompetence. Nevertheless, the majority of Aztec citizens would traverse life firmly ensconced within the social cocoon of their immediate families. Central to Aztec society was the Calpoli, a tightly knit assembly of families bound by blood or long-standing associations. Elders, led by the esteemed Calpolic, a chief elected for life, wielded authority over the Calpoli's landholdings. These lands were allocated to members for cultivation, under the condition of regular tribute payments. The common farmers, known as Makawaltin, tilled these lands but with the stipulation that they not leave them fallow for more than two years. Upon a farmer's demise without heirs, his land reverted to the elders for redistribution. In addition to their agricultural toil, the Kalpali united for religious rituals and festivities, maintaining their own temple. This intricate system existed not just in the capital Tenochtitlan, but extended its reach across the entire Aztec Empire, comprising 80 Kalpaltin. The bedrock of Aztec society was its vast farming populace, the Makawaltin. This segment comprised two groups, the laborers who undertook the grueling tasks of hoeing, planting, and irrigating, and the overseers, skilled horticulturalists responsible for seeding, transplanting, crop rotation, and optimal planting times. These farmers could be further classified as those who owned their land and those who worked estates, compensating their rent with a portion of their harvest. The latter, known as Mayak, constituted the lowest rung of Aztec society, lacking land ownership and surrendering up to 30% of their produce to their overlords. In times of war, the Makawaltin were expected to perform military service and contribute to state projects, such as road and temple construction. Amidst Aztec society, a somber note was struck by the presence of slaves, referred to as Tlacotin, which translates to bought ones. Slaves encompassed conquered peoples, those convicted of serious crimes like theft, and individuals ensnared by crippling debts, often stemming from gambling. Those with means could buy their freedom. Slaves served not only as farmers but also as general laborers, domestics, or concubines. Importantly, they were protected by law from abuse, whether from their masters or others. Talented slaves could attain significant roles, such as estate managers, and were free to marry individuals not in servitude. Their offspring were born free, as slave status was not hereditary. Artisans, known as Tolteca in homage to the revered Toltec civilization, held an esteemed position in Aztec society. They encompassed various crafts, such as carpentry, pottery, stonemasonry, metalwork, weaving, featherwork, and the learned scribes. Craftsmen often operated in specialized, large-scale workshops. The merchants, traders, and professional hunters constituted vital professions. Traders who conducted business across extensive territories, known as Pocteca, held a prestigious, hereditary position. They dealt in precious commodities like tropical bird feathers, gold, turquoise, shells, greenstone, cacao beans, and exotic animal skins, often acting as agents of the state. Oversight of the trading class fell to the Pocti Catlatoque, the most experienced traders, who administered trade and justice within their ranks. A unique group of traders, the Tultlani, specialized in the slave trade, a role entwined with providing sacrificial victims to the state, thus affording them special privileges and great wealth. Additional groups of traders included the Tenkunanink, responsible for collecting tribute, and the Norlotomika, who ventured into hostile territories, effectively acting as spies while gathering intelligence in foreign markets. Traders also played a significant role in the state religion, particularly in festivals dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the god of war, where they sponsored celebratory banquets and provided slaves for sacrifice. 
In the mosaic of Aztec society, each role played a unique part, contributing to the vibrancy and complexity of this ancient civilization. In the bustling world of the Aztecs, society unfolded in a vivid tapestry, woven from distinct classes, each with its own unique role and purpose. At the pinnacle of Aztec society stood the nobility, known as Pipiltin, with their unmistakable attire of prized feather garments. These elite individuals possessed private lands and enjoyed riches flowing from the tributes of their tenants and serfs. Some among them were appointed as state administrators, drawn from their hereditary class. Yet, exceptional valor on the battlefield could propel a commoner into the esteemed ranks of the Koapipiltin or Eagle Nobles, offering a path to higher standing. Just above the Pipiltin class lay the Teteoptin, occupying the highest echelons of the state apparatus. These influential figures assumed pivotal roles as city and regional governors. Residing in opulent palaces, they adorned themselves in even more splendid attire and jewelry, often graced with the prestigious in suffix added to their names. Remarkably, the Aztec king, the Tlotoani, belonged to this exalted class, symbolizing their immense power. The priestly class, Tlamakaski, not only orchestrated the intricate state religion, its numerous festivals, and rituals but also presided over the state's education system. They held sway over Aztec artistic expression in its myriad forms. Although individuals from any social stratum could embrace the priestly calling, the most influential clergy emerged from the Pipilton class. At the zenith of the religious hierarchy stood the king, aided by two high priests, Quetzalcoatl Totoclamakaski, responsible for the Huitzilopochtli cult, and Quetzalcoatl Tlaloc Tlamakaski, overseeing the cult venerating the rain god Tlaloc. This esteemed cadre of priests extended to include the Mexicatl Teowazin, supervisor of elite state-run schools, the Huitznawa Teowazin and Tecpan Teowazin, tasked with the oversight of the priesthood, festivals, and temple sites, and the Kwakui, the lowest level of priests responsible for small districts or parishes. Within the priestly class, diverse specializations flourished, with some delving into astronomy, writing, medicine, prophecy, and the interpretation of visions and dreams. Those with this talent acquired the esteemed title Tonalpuk, offering guidance on auspicious days for a range of events, from marriages to long journeys. In times of war, priests could also become warriors, playing critical roles such as carrying effigies of major Aztec gods into battle and collecting sacrificial victims from the bravest captured warriors. Additionally, a distinct group of witch doctors and magicians performed enigmatic ceremonies, claimed transformative gifts, and cast spells to ward off malevolence. Education in Aztec society was a cornerstone, shaping the future social positions of its youth. Commoner children embarked on compulsory schooling from their early teens, with parental education preceding this stage. A notable tradition marked the transition to adolescence, as all ten-year-old boys received a special haircut with a lingering lock at their neck's nape, called a piacli. This lock remained uncut until the boy captured his first prisoner, signifying a rite of passage. At the heart of education were the telpocli or youth houses. These institutions catered to both boys and girls, imparting military training in one and instructing the other in their roles within religious ceremonies. Essential skills, including dancing, singing, public speaking, recitation, history, and fundamental moral and religious lessons, formed the core curriculum. For the nobility's offspring, a distinct path lay ahead in the Karmakak schools, while initially reserved for the nobility, exceptionally gifted children from lower classes could also secure admission. Here, subjects spanned rhetoric, music, poetry, law, astronomy, mathematics, history, architecture, agriculture, and warfare. Those destined for the priesthood continued their education at the austere Tlamakaskli, characterized by meditation, fasting, and self-inflicted bloodletting through cactus spine piercings. In the grand mosaic of Aztec society, education and societal roles shaped the destiny of its people, each thread weaving an intricate and vibrant tapestry of life. In the vibrant tapestry of Aztec life, the journey from youth to adulthood culminated in the sacred bonds of marriage. Guided by the wisdom of elders, these unions were often influenced by the young couple's own affections, nurtured amidst the bustling festivities of public gatherings. Typically, these life-changing unions occurred within the same Kalpoli, fostering a sense of community and shared heritage. 
The stage was set in the late teens or early twenties, where a couple embarked on a four-day matrimonial celebration. The bride, adorned in resplendent red feathers and cloaked in the sparkling powder of fool's gold pyrite, took center stage. Amidst feasts and heartfelt speeches, the union was consecrated. While traditional gender roles prevailed, with women tending to the home, nurturing children, and honing skills in weaving and basketwork, Aztec women retained a unique status. They wielded control over their personal property and inherited wealth, and their influence extended to various spheres of public life, including medicine, education, religion, and even commerce. Remarkably, Aztec men bore the responsibility of raising their male offspring, a rarity in ancient societies. However, the marital arrangement favored the male, as the couple resided with his family. Moreover, he enjoyed the privilege of having multiple wives and maintaining a retinue of concubines. In the grand tapestry of Aztec society, wealth was not merely an end in itself, rather, it emerged as a natural byproduct of one's social position. The pursuit of rank and reputation, underpinned by land ownership, stood as the paramount goals for those aspiring to ascend within the social hierarchy. Aztec society bore a clear stratification, with numerous layers, yet, the common threads of perpetual warfare and an enduring religious tapestry wove together a cohesive and inclusive social structure. As the influence of the trading class began to extend into domains traditionally reserved for the aristocracy, Aztec society stood poised for evolution and growth.